Today, we are building a frequency counter. This ESP32 based counter measures signals up to 40 MHz with a sensitive RF preamplifier that can detect inputs as low as 25 mV. Perfect for weak signals. And it has a bonus feature. If no signal is detected for 5 seconds, it automatically becomes an internet synchronized clock. So it's either measuring frequency or showing you the exact time, never just a blank display. All the schematics, code and PCB files are linked in the description below. In this video I will explain the schematic with the RF amplifier section. Then I will explain how to set up the Arduino IDE and flash the firmware to the ESP32. Finally, I will give you a demo of the frequency counter in action. Let's start with the schematic. Here you see the schematic of the complete frequency counter. This part is the RF preamplifier. And here you see the ESP32 and the LCD display connections. And below here the test signal, which is adjustable from 1 Hz to 40 MHz. Let's focus on the preamplifier. For the RF preamplifier, we use a TLV3501. It is a very fast comparator from Texas Instruments. At the input, we have a 1K resistor and two anti parallel diodes to protect the input against high voltages. It can manage up to 15 volts. C2 removes any DC component in the signal. Then resistors R7 and R4 are a voltage divider, so we have 2.5 volts on the plus input of the op-amp. R8, R6 and R5 also build a voltage divider. And because of R6, the minus input will be about 12 mV higher than the plus input. This results in a peak-to-peak -peak sensitivity of about 25 mV. This bead is to decouple the circuit from RF. If you do not have a bead, you can also put a 10 ohm resistor here. And the output of the TLV3501 is connected to the ESP32 with a voltage divider to make sure you have a 3.3 volt logic signal. Let me now show you the PCB layout of the complete frequency counter. Here you see the PCB layout. This is the BNC connector for the input signal. If you do not have a PCB version, you can insert a panel BNC connector through this hole and manually solder wires on it. The ESP32 is inserted in these two sockets. The preamplifier is partially under the ESP32. This is the TLV3501, a SOT236. This potentiometer here adjusts the LCD contrast. You will need to set the wiper at around 1 volts to make the characters clearly visible. On the other side is the LCD display. Here at connector J1 you have the test signal, the ground and the 5 volt available. The unit is powered by the ESP32. Just connect 5 volts from your PC, USB or a phone charger. By inserting two 20 mm M3 screws into these bottom holes, the unit can stand upright at a slight angle on your lab table. The PCB Gerber files and KiCad files are linked in the description, so you can order the PCB. Some tips for the PCB. The TLV3501 comes in a tiny SOT236 package. The pinout is described in the specification as you see here on the left. On the package you can see the letters NXA. The pin 1 is as indicated here. Soldering the SOT236 is good for your solder skills. Eventually, I just put two blobs of solder and remove the excess tin with some desoldering leads. Let's call it approved. If you do not want to order a PCB, 
you can buy an RF amplifier module online. Here you see an example of a module like that. Just search TLV3501 module. Then you can add the ESP32 and LCD display with flywires or an experimental PCB. Now let's program the ESP32. To program the ESP32 with the Arduino IDE, we first need to add it via the Boards Manager. First copy this URL. Go to Preferences. And paste it here in the additional Boards Manager URLs. I already did that, so I will not paste it. Press OK. And one more time, OK. Then go to Tools. Board, Port Manager, and in the search bar type ESP32. Then select this one, ESP32 by Espressive Systems. I already installed it, so I will close. The ESP32 boards package is quite big. Downloading and installing it may take some time. Then we select the board. Tools, Board, ESP32, and select ESP32 Dev module. Then you open the code, which you can download in the description. There are two versions, one without a clock and one with the NTP clock function. For the NTP clock version, you need to enter your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password. Also enter your time zone here. For instance, if you're in Hong Kong, it's GMT plus eight, enter eight here. Make sure your ESP32 is connected and select the COM port. In my case, COM 11. Now press upload. When the upload is complete, you can power up your frequency counter. If you have problems with uploading, in Windows open the Device Manager and check the port for problems or conflicts. This is your ESP32. Make sure you have the driver installed and there is no conflict mentioned here. If you get an error during upload, you may need to press the boot button. As soon as you see uploading or connecting, Quickly press the boot button and release it. This will solve the problem. Now, let's power it up. If you use the clock version, it will first connect to the internet to synchronize the clock. If there's no signal for 5 seconds, it will change to the clock mode. You can test the frequency counter with the test signal on J1. By default, the test signal is 10 kHz. You can change the frequency in the serial monitor. For instance, 1 MHz. Next time you power it up, it will be 10 kHz again. So this ESB-based counter can measure signals up to 40 MHz. It has a built-in adjustable test signal and an RF pre-amplifier so it can detect inputs as low as 25 millivolts. And, as a bonus, you get an internet clock for free. I hope you liked the video. If it was useful for you, please like and subscribe and leave your experiences in the comments.